On June 15, 1994, a cinematic phenomenon made its debut in theaters all around the world. So let's talk about Leomon. Greetings everyone and welcome to my great pride. In today's video, we will be taking a close look at the design of one of Digimon's recurring tragedies, Leomon, and his pale twin, Panjamon. Well, I say twin, but Panjamon might just be more of a paternal figure. Ish. I'll be explaining that shortly. Leomon's legacy is one that is filled with tragedy and endearment. Within the fandom, he is as much of a meme as he is legendary, and today, we will be exploring the different layers of his design elements. So first, let's ask, what's in a name? Whether it's in Japanese or in any other language, Leomon is always Leomon. There's really nothing surprising about that here. Leomon's name is obviously derived from Leo, which is the Latin word for lion. It's a pretty popular given name in general. Across multiple cultures and languages, Leo is often a masculine name that's meant to evoke the regal strength of the lion. This, of course, means that Leo is a name that's fondly given to fictional characters too. Now, things get a little more interesting once we evolve Leomon into one of his perfect forms, Panjamon. Oh, Panjamon. What's in a name, Panjamon? As I've alluded in the video's intro and thumbnail, Leomon and Panjamon might just have had their names based on a rather infamous conflict in the animation world. You may have heard of it before. The Lion King has since garnered a lot of controversy due to its similarities to a Japanese franchise called Jungle Emperor Leo, also known as Kimba the White Lion. The similarities are mostly aesthetic, but also incredibly difficult to ignore even from just a surface level observation. The history of this controversy has had its fair share of coverage already, and it even recently got reignited back in 2019 because of Disney's CGI remake of The Lion King. So how do Liamon and Panjamon fit in all this? Okay, so in the English-speaking world, Kimba is the eponymous main character of the franchise, and his father's name was Caesar, who was also a white lion. But in the original Japanese dub, Kimba's name is Leo, and Caesar is Panja. Kimba and Caesar, Leo and Panja, father and son. I know this may be a little weird, but it seems that Digimon took notice of the Lion King controversy. And during the 90s, boy did the Japanese really called out Disney on this. I'm not about to turn this video into a Simba vs Kimba mini documentary, so here's the TLDR. The similarities between the Lion King and Jungle Emperor Leo sparked quite an uproar, leading to protests and even a petition signed by Japanese animators demanding Disney to formally acknowledge the similarities between the two works. All the while, Disney denied all allegations of plagiarism. Ultimately, the Tezuka family and Tezuka Productions never pursued legal action against Disney. Now, there's a lot more to the story than this, of course, but I digress. This has been What's in a Name. Alright, so now let's take a look at Leomon and Panjamon's design. They are visually nearly identical, with the only differences being their fur color and the color of their necklaces. Leomon maintains the typical tawny color palette of the modern lion, while Panjamon has a white coat. In reality, white lions are just the same species of modern lions except that they have a rare condition called leucism. For lions, leucism is a recessive trait, a color mutation that results in the partial loss of pigmentation. This mutation is less severe than albinism, since animals with leucism retain the natural color of their eyes. Even for Leomon and Panjamon, both Digimon get to keep their natural blue eyes. 
Since white lions are a result of a rare color mutation and not an adaptation based on environmental pressures, these lions would definitely not be suited to live in cold, snowy locations, as Panjamon's official profile might have you believe. But to be fair, back in the ancient past, there was once a time when lions did in fact roam the cold and snow-covered lands throughout Eurasia during the Ice Age. These were cave lions, a now extinct species of big cats that thrived in the cold much like Panjamon would have. It's still unclear how cave lions are related to their modern descendants, if at all. Some have theorized that cave lions resulted when a group of lions left the African plains to go north, spreading throughout Europe and Asia and eventually adapting to the cold. Others argue that they may have been a completely different species of feline altogether, with their origins being deeply rooted within Eurasia. Regardless of what they were, their interactions with early humans have entranced our ancestors' imaginations since ancient times, as evidenced by cave paintings and other ancient artifacts found from that time period. And this nicely leads into our next point of discussion. The subjects of our analysis are not just inspired by lions, but also by humans. Well, more specifically, their designs are anthropomorphized lions. Anthropomorphism is when non-human things, living or not, are given human characteristics. And the lion just might be one of the oldest subjects that humans have anthropomorphized. In fact, those cave lions I've talked about? A statue carved from mammoth ivory resembling a human-lion hybrid figurine was discovered in Germany in the late 19th century. This statue of a man-lion is possibly older than any large-scale human civilization like ancient Rome or ancient Egypt. So we know that our ancestors also thought that lions were pretty cool, even before we invented literature to the point that we still like to anthropomorphize them to this day. And now we move on to our final point of discussion, which is that other fascination that we have of Leomon. Within the Digimon franchise, Leomon has essentially been typecasted. The role? Cool guy everyone likes but gets tragically killed. Oops. Uh, spoiler alert? Is it even a spoiler? Anyway, it was only as recently as 2021 when Leomon finally broke out of his typecast and legitimately survived a whole anime season. But why did this typecasting happen? And why did it work so well? When we think about what typecasting is, it's when an actor or actress excels particularly well in a specific role that they would repeatedly play characters that serve similar roles to a plot. By that definition, Leomon succeeds in his typecast to great effect. In Digimon lore, Leomon is a noble Digimon that greatly values justice. This character trait was carried over for his anime adaptation back in Season 1. He served as an ally that would help the Digidestin from time to time. Leomon was not the only supporting Digimon to lend aid to the kids. And he also wasn't the only Digimon that was killed off in an effort to protect the kids either. But of all the sacrifices to ensure the kids were protected, Leomon's was by far the one that hit the hardest, especially for us, the audience. Well, I'm sure that Wizardmon fans would argue that, but I digress. Leomon's established relationships with the kids plus his selflessness and good nature immediately endeared him to fans, which is why his death felt so heavy and meaningful. And for better or worse, this formula catapulted Leomon's legacy to meme status. Heck, that one time Panjamon appeared in the anime, he also got offed, probably by association, and there wasn't even any build-up or anything, yet his fate was immediately sealed the moment we knew who he looked like. Leomon managed to break his typecast once, and very recently too. And typecasted actors have been able to break out and eventually play roles that go against type, so who knows what will happen to future iterations of our beloved Lion Bro. We have made it to the end of the video. 
an analysis dedicated to Leoman was always going to be quite loaded, and honestly, there's so much more that could be said. But this is enough, I think. For now, let's celebrate Leoman for overcoming the fate of his typecast while still maintaining his endearing nobility and good nature. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. Thank you so much for watching and train hard tamers!